Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a, something a little bit different. We're back to a update discussion today about the latest update, the Division Bell. So this is a rather large balance patch so be prepared for this video to be quite long. Haven't really planned it out too much, just thought I'd give my first impressions of the patch and what I plan to do in the future is go through all of the divisions again since this update and uh, remake them uh, based upon this update and uh, go through what I think is now strong, what, what isn't in each division. Uh, so I'll be going through all of the uh, division videos again that I did previously. I'm going to make updated versions of all of them so I'm sure some of you guys will be happy for that. I've been holding off until this patch on purpose um, before making those videos. So hopefully we'll have not too many more changes from now but either way I can always do them for a third time if I have to. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's okay with me. Let's have a look. Let's start by reading the division update. So the Division Bell, still Division Normandy 44's fourth patch is now available. Fantastic. So here is the long-awaited patch log. Now just before we go into this, I would like you guys to know that I did have some influence on this. I am part of the balance team discussion on the forum. So I did have a discussion mainly around the 2nd Infantry that some of my influences came into. Um, other divisions maybe not so much, uh, mainly because I don't necessarily know enough about them or I just think they're okay. Um, honestly in my opinion a lot of the divisions are already balanced for 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 which is what I tend to play. In 1v1 and 10v10 however I know things are a lot different so people have their own opinions on that kind of thing. So either way, first change, first big change, massive change really, 10v10, 10v10 game time limit is now 30 minutes instead of 40. Now this is a massive change, absolutely huge change, because basically it means that phase C happens for only 10 minutes in a game now rather than 20, because what used to happen is phase A would be 10 minutes, phase B would be 10 minutes, and then phase C would be 20 minutes. But I know that they've been having trouble balancing phase C and 10v10s because of the sheer amount of units that are that are available so it makes it very sort of um, axis biased because of all of the heavy units that come out so they're definitely trying to like restrict that by shortening the time limit and I think that's the main reason for the change but I'm not sure if they needed to be that drastic 35 minutes maybe would have probably been better taking away 10 minutes from the 10v10 games makes them I don't know I think that's too drastic in my opinion um, I wasn't privy to that before it came about otherwise I probably would have basically had my thoughts heard on the forum about it yeah I think it's a bit overboard 35 minutes would have been okay 15 minutes in phase C kind of makes sense right you need to have more time in phase C because that's just when it's about to get fun for a lot of decks especially like Panzerleer for example so you've got to give them a chance Either way, there's that, and it is what it is. Fixes. Let's have a look at these. They fix the AB M1919 MMG units servant model. I'm guessing that's uh, the model that they have in game. They fixed a bug when sounds could sometimes become scratchy. Now I'm not sure if this is like a similar problem to I have at the start of game sometimes when uh, your units start to roll out, and I get this really, really weird sort of feedback in my ears and I always think it's something to do with my computer but I know that other people suffer from it as well and it's really really horrible it's just an annoying little sound in the background so hopefully maybe that's got rid of it we've got uh, fixed orders order feedbacks display when units are moving in formation that's interesting fixed US British and French officers portraits fix the storch rear turret okay so that can now fire I presume because the Storch never used to fire back at anything. So let's have a look at balance. So these are overall allies changes. Reduced the US Greyhound price by 80, that's nice, that will make it, uh, or 280 sorry. I'd like to see it say from whatever it was, I can't exactly remember, I think it was 90 to 80 so that will hopefully make those used a little bit more. Uh, the recon staghound price reduced from 110 to 90. Again, that's a that's actually a really nice change because the staghound was like never used. 
Um, the Jeep 50 cal price from 35 to 30. Now I think Jeep 50 cals definitely have a place. They ha they come under that sort of non-armored 50 cal vehicle group, and you can get some infantry. For example, I think it's the Gli Glider rifles and Glider um, leader. They come in the truck with the 50 cal without any armor. And those vehicles can be very useful if you keep them at maximum range because they are out of range of enemy machine guns that the infantry can use. Uh, yet they still have the vulnerability of like the long range AT weapons, which makes sense, right? Um, so yeah, I think that's interesting. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they'll be used any more than they already are, but it's an interesting change. Increasing the Tripolston price from 70 to 80 I think is warranted because the Tripolston is easily the most used and most cost-efficient AA on the Allies' side at the moment. And they've also increased the CMP Tripolston uh, to the same, which is interesting. Umber AA price reduced from 50 to 40. Now I think this is a bit of a silly change. The Humber, Humber AA currently is really strong with the, crew, with the third Canadian. Uh, I use them a lot with the 30, they have like the dual 30 cows, the dual 50 cows, and they are fantastic for pinning down enemy infantry. And they do have three front armor as well. So incredibly effective fire position vehicles. Um, but the 50 cows can pin things down in like tree lines and so on. You just got to keep them out of the way of AT, of course, like you do with most fire support vehicles. And they're also fantastic at, at taking on aircraft. So I'm not entirely convinced about that. And they've also reduced the Crusader AA Mark II price from 80 to 70. I think that's just sort of a thing to do with usage. I don't think many people brought out the Crusader AAs because they're a little bit overpriced. And I think that makes sense. So they've also increased the M1919 HMG range from 500 to 600. And they've increased the HP from 3 to 4, which is great. This was a change that I actually... Uh, supported on the forums so yeah that's that's nice to see I think it will make them a lot more used throughout at the moment currently for, for example in the second infantry the M1919 was just like never used anymore because it only has 3 HP so it just got killed really quickly and the range limitations were just horrible but now they've sort of rectified that and they've also rectified the Vickers HMG range from 500 to 600 as well, which will make them even more useful than they already were. The great thing about the Vickers HMG is they just never ran out of ammunition. So that's a fantastic change that will make a lot of units that, or a lot of divisions that use Vickers HMGs a lot more useful. So USA, they've reduced the flamethrower price from 25 to 15. And they've increased BAR rounds from 200 rounds per gun to 260. So a little bit more ammunition there. And the reduction in flamethrower price is welcome as well. Because the two-man flamethrower squads just, they just die too quickly to really make a difference. And uh, now they're, they're sort of more worth their cost. So let's jump into the specific divisions. 101st Division. Increase the glider rifles availability from 6 to 8. Now this is kind of nice because it gives a lot more variance in units in the 101st. Moving into the later phases, you're not still relying on your phase A infantry like the airborne rifles. You don't have to keep them alive for the whole game anymore. You can actually rely on some substance late game from the glider rifles, which is a nice little change. They've increased uh, one level of veterancy for the 50 cal Jeep. Again, this might increase their use, but I'm not entirely convinced still. They've increased the AB Bazooka's accuracy from seven to nine, which is fantastic. Definitely welcome. I think it matches now the Panzer Shrek. And just to look down here as well, they've increased it for the Marauders as well. So yeah, just overall increasing the accuracy of the Bazookas so so good because it makes it a lot more reliable and it was just irritating when they would miss all the time but now they won't so much like the the pandestrex basically which is great they've removed the recon greyhound from phase c and they've increased the recon greyhound availability in to three per pack in phase b instead which is again an interesting um choice i think it will make recon vehicles in the 101st maybe used a little bit more personally i just find recon infantry 
way better in most situations because recon vehicles are often super overpriced. Um, but they are trying to tackle that, and uh, we've already seen, obviously, the Staghound and the Greyhound be reduced in price overall. They reduced the Airborne Engineer's price from 35 to 30 since the Napalm nerf for all flamethrowers. I think this was necessary because the Airborne Engineers were not worth taking anymore simply because of that nerf. I still found them effective, but... It just stung a little when you had to bring in airborne engineers and it cost you 35 points apiece when they're just not as strong as they used to be. So I think that's that's interesting. They've added two single cards of Wolverine in Phase B as well. And I think that's just to give the 101st a little bit more substance in the 1v1s. Although I'm not sure it'll make too much of a diff uh, difference in the larger scheme of things. Especially in... 2v2, 3v3, because you might not even bring them out for the entire game anyway, because you're most likely going to be focusing on a part of the map that doesn't require them. So there's that. Right, moving on to the third Canadian, possibly one of the strongest divisions I felt on the ally side of things moving into this patch. Let's see what they've changed. Packs of one veteran 17 pound up has been added in phase C which is nice because they did lack some serious AT in phase B and C. And um, they've reduced the Canadian 17 pounder price from 120 to 100. Okay, so this is like a little bit of a buff, which is good for their AT capabilities. I think that was where they were sort of off balance on the division. They reduced the Wasp price from 40 to 30. Now, I don't really agree with that change very much. I think the Wasp is already a very effective unit for use in towns and uh, also can very easily take control of the edge of forest very nicely so i'm not too convinced about that and they've also reduced the canadian flamethrower price from 20 to 10 which makes me think that pretty much every canadian division from now on will maintain or will contain um, flamethrowers because that's just a steal if you have them accompanying your other troops just for 10 points a piece you're going to have like some seriously effective infantry going on and considering that increasing the stormtroopers price from 20 to 25 isn't going to make too much of a difference if now every stormtrooper is supported by a flamethrower as well because it will be because they're so cheap now i'm not sure how that will really affect the division as a whole because I'm not sure if you'll be able to sacrifice the slots in the support tab say for a flamethrower but I think it will happen and we'll see a lot of flamethrower infantry combo uh, from both the US divisions and the third Canadian so yeah that's going to be very interesting it's going to be like some new meta coming on with like rifle flamethrower combos which is going to be horrific to deal with and I'm kind of worried that they have reduced the price so much because although i called the flamethrower squads very brittle and temperamental with their two health and two man squads i still think they need to be careful how cheap they make them and honestly adding this much of a buff to 17 pounders for the canadians i don't know i think 17 pounders were in a nice place now I feel like they're going to be super OP. Uh, I'm not so sure about that change. But either way, it's happened and we'll have to see how much of an effect it takes because I still think the third Canadian after this will be one of the stronger 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 divisions for sure. So second infantry division. They've increased the rifles availability in phase A from 4 to 5, in B, 6 to 7, and in C, 8 to 9. So overall across the board a rifle availability increase which I think is perfect and something again that I helped suggest on the forums um, and agreed with on the forums I didn't put the idea across first but I definitely had that thought in mind going into this patch and I just think that it will allow them to sustain themselves much more as an infantry division because currently I felt like the the second div infantry division always relied on their like elite infantry like the ranger units and you'd have like this stupid limited amount of infantry 
that you had to be so careful with throughout the game. You didn't feel like an infantry division with like expendable infantry, which is exactly what happened in like World War Two, right? Infantry divisions were expendable. They went first. They basically led the charge, and then the armored divisions would come in and clean up, or that the armored divisions would punch through, and the the infantry divisions would be there, left there to, to to clean up. They would always do the dirty work, and the second infantry didn't feel like that. It always felt like they were relying on elite troops that were like very specific in in their sort of use, and therefore bringing rifles into like a nice amount of of availability means they're actually going to be used, which is great. So aside from that, they've added a pack of two veteran fifty seven millimeter guns in phase A and two veteran 76mm guns in phase C. So just uh, increasing the availability of veteran AT guns. I think this is more just a, a general buff to help them out in phase A and phase C when it comes to countering enemy tanks because they do struggle a little bit in that purpose and end up relying quite heavily on the range of marauders. And honestly, the range of marauders were, you know, not that great. Especially if you're relying them on, on them so heavily because they used to miss. But now they have that accuracy increase as well. It'll be interesting to see how m many people rely on the AT guns now and how many people rely on the marauders. And I think it will definitely just depend on the map more than anything. But still, interesting changes. Let's have a look at the first pan Cerner. They've aligned the characteristics and price of the Polish Mustang Mark III with the American P-51D. So that's just in terms of making the Mustang faster now to match the Mustang Mark III, or the M Mustang Mark III to match the P-51 in terms of speed. Um, so they're not so slow and don't hang around so much anymore, which is nice. It means the first Panzer gets a considerable air buff, honestly. They've added one veterancy to the level of Dragoni, which is great. Another very welcome change. I know the first Panzerna was perceived to be relatively weak, so making their infantry just that little bit better will be quite nice and give that extra accuracy buff to the Piat that they control, which will be very nice. They've changed the Phase A 57mm in Carrier. Uh, from three to two veterans. Okay, so that's gonna make them fire a lot quicker, which is nice. Um, having those at veteran at uh, veteran level um, when they have a command nearby will be two stars, I think, now. So they'll fire nice and quick. And uh, considering they are on those like brain carriers, they can move around very fast. So that's a little welcome change to pressure that the Panzerna can put on in Phase A, and they are quite Phase A um, reliant at the moment, so adding even more power to their Phase A will be interesting to see how much of a difference that really makes. They've added one veteran C to the 17 pounder in half track in Phase C, and they've reduced the 17 pounder price from 120 to 110. And they've also reduced the fire support staghound price from 85 to 75. So whether or not people start bringing in more of these staghounds, I'm not so sure. Because the staghound, it's kind of odd. The statistics on them are very similar to that of like a greyhound. But I've just never felt them do very well. I just haven't. But maybe I'll try them out a little bit more if they're, if they're much cheaper than they used to be. In terms of the... 17 pounder price reduction again similar to the Canadians it's not as severe which is nice I think it's a bit more balanced in terms of the change and I think this will square off the Panzerna quite nicely in comparison to other divisions so I quite like the Panzerna changes let's move on to the third armoured they've removed one slot of RT and recon and they've added two slots to the tanks now this is quite nice because you never really used to use all of the recon slots and you never used to use all of the arty slots. But using all the other tank slots is very much viable because you're going to be throwing out a lot of Shermans. And especially in phase C when you have 150 income, 
you do get through those tanks very quickly. And when you're having to rely on on like bringing in your 76 mil Shermans just to be able to do damage and not having like any cheap Shermans that could be used for other purposes, it gets kind of stale and it's kind of annoying. Um, you, ha you have all these like slots taken up by like one tank. Uh, like if you have like one, one jumbo uh, and uh, 176 mil like in one slot each. It's just really annoying. So now what you can do is you can kind of mix in some of the cheaper Shermans and have them pumped out in the later phases, which will be really nice. They've increased the phase 8 income to 70 as well, and I think that's just to make sure they can't be punished so much early on if they lose all of their troops near the beginning of the game, because currently it's incredibly hard to come back as a third armoured if you lose so much in phase 8. They've removed one pack of jumbo from phase B and C, so we're not going to be seeing so much jumbo spam. And I think that's more for Tempe Tens than anything else because you don't really get to see that many of them these days in normal games like 1v1 to 4v4 because with them being 20 armor, they're not as great as they used to be. They've also reduced the M4A 375 price from 150 to 130, which is a massive change because in phase B, you're going to be able to bring out quite a few of those very cheaply and if you use them correctly under smoke and so on you're going to be able to sneak up on things like panthers and pop them very close range very quickly and that'll be very very nice and they're great fire support weapons shermans are fantastic 50 cals 230 cals and their he on their gun great absolutely great so interesting buff to the third armored i think it's going to give them st some stability in phase a and it's going to make them a lot more fun to play moving into phase B and C. So I, I overall I really like the third armor changes and I think they are going to definitely help out the third armored in the game in general. Moving on to the sixth airborne. It's all about the mosquito pathfinders really. They've increased the mosquito pathfinder price from 170 to 190 and they've removed one pack of the mosquito pathfinders entirely. So we're not going to be seeing mosquito pathfinder spam anymore and might even stop seeing mosquito pathfinders being brought in so much at the start of the game uh, to just uh, bomb out those roads that can be really really frustrating to play against so that's a nice little change i think definitely makes uh, mosquito pathfinders a lot more reliant on precision strikes and getting them in the right locations to do the damage so yeah that's overall a great change i feel They've also added a single Typhoon with a bomb in Phase A. And I think this is more to add variance in how you use the planes in Phase A. Not sure if it will ever really be brought out, not by me anyway. In 1v1, maybe that might be more useful than a Mosquito Pathfinder now. I can't really think of how much that might cost though. Either way, remove the Staghound from phase C and they've increased the Staghound's availability per pack in phase B from 1 to 2. And uh, this is, goes the same as them reducing the price of the Recon Staghound in general from the changes all the way up here. Where was it? Pretty sure they changed the prices of the Staghound, there we go, Recon Staghound from 110 to 90. So that's going to affect the Sixth Airborne and increasing their availability in Phase B might see them be used a little bit more than they used to. Right, reduced air landing rifles price from 25 to 20, that's very very welcome. Air landing were never value for money, um, they just really lacked any sort of punch and their piats just absolutely terrible because piats are so yeah 25 to 20 that's a nice change in my opinion might actually be worth taking them now they've also reduced the carrier recce price from 40 to 30 again i think that's a plea to make more people try and actually use the thing and they've reduced the flamethrower price from 25 to 20 which i think is a lot better price change than some of the other flamethrower price buffs that have occurred to other divisions. That's very nice. Because now, like, people are actually going to use flamethrowers more in this division 
even though they already were used quite a lot. I saw a lot of people use them as supplements already. So this little price buff will, will make it worth it, basically. They've increased the availability of Reki in Jeep from 4 to 5, and they've increased the availability of Reki in Humber Mark 3s from 3 to 4. So overall increase in availability is very welcome for the Zekth Airborne. I always found that they were like the first division to run out of troops in any game that went like longer than 30 minutes. Sick Airborne always run out, but having a, just a little bit more recon may allow you to be a little bit more aggressive with your recon and maybe make some plays early on that might counteract the fact that you're going to run out of troops later on. So that's interesting. As for the 15th Scottish, they've removed one pack of Churchill 5s from Phase B and they've added one pack of Churchill 5s in Phase C. I'm pretty sure this is just to sort of stem the Churchill 5 spam that is currently a thing. They've reduced the Churchill 4 price from 130 to 120, which is nice, and they've increased the Churchill 7 veterancy by one level. They've also increased Humber AA availability to 3 Picard, which is crazy. I think the 15 Scottish are actually going to be quite damn strong now. Maybe having less Churchill B 5s available in Phase B might sting a little, but having extra availability of Humbers now they've been buffed is pretty crazy. And having the Churchill 6 have increased veterancy makes it way more take way worth more taking than the crocodile. I'm sorry if that didn't make sense, but yeah, just bringing that instead of the crocodile now is basically like no question so i'm not sure if i'm particularly keen on these page on these changes i don't think it's going to nerf the 15th scottish enough to make them balanced in the general scheme of things i, th I still think like this 15th scottish will be one of the most powerful divisions on the allied side of things because currently i think like the third canadian and the 15th scottish are two of like the most powerful and currently this patch has kind of made the third canadian stronger yes they nerfed the, the stormtroopers which are very strong but now they've just added flamethrowers to them basically by making the flamethrowers so cheap and with the 15th scottish well you know making that churchill seven like better veteran i don't know it's already a pain in the ass to deal with sometimes and uh, it's just a really nice supplement for your army in certain situations and now it's just going to be even better. But let's move on to the 2E or 2nd Armoured French Division. I'm just going to put it that way. They've increased the Voltiger's availability to 4 per pack and they've reduced the Greyhound price to 85. Now I think the reason they've done the French Greyhound price reduction and same with the uh, Greyhound RBFM price reduction to 60 is because of the takeaway of the evasion made the Greyhounds just like not worth bringing anymore. So yeah, they're, they're just, I just like that change in general. It's going to bring them back into the fray and having more availability on the, you know, less veteran infantry might also let them see play as well a little bit more. They've reduced the flamethrower price for the French as well. So I think we're going to be seeing more flamethrower infantry combo again. It's definitely going to become come into the meta just all over the place. Just flamethrower squads supporting infantry squads. It's already kind of a thing, but it's just going to be even more prevalent in this patch. Um, guards Armoured. They've increased the Achilles Veterancy by one level. I like that change a lot. They've reduced the Stuart 6 price from 90 to 80. I think that allows you to bring in one per tick at the start of the game. So instead of just bringing Cromwells in in Phase A now, it might actually be worth bringing in Stuarts. Because currently I just bring in Cromwells, I think, in my Guards Armoured. 
But going back to this Achilles veterancy level, it's very, very nice. The Cromwell 7 regrouped into a single pack of three in phase B and a single card in phase A. So, I'm not sure what it was before. But the Cromwell 7, I've always got confused with the uh, Guards Armoured Cromwells, just because I don't use the Guards Armoured enough. But the Cromwell 7, I think that's the one with the upgraded turret with the 11 front armour and um, 11 AP. Yeah. I don't know what how that's going to change things too much, honestly. Maybe we'll just see more of them in Phase B now because there's basically more availability from one pack and I think I only bring one pack already. They reduced the Sherman 5 price from 140 to 130 So there's that. And they reduced the Command Sherman 5 price from 150 to 135 Now I like these price changes quite a lot because they match the third armoured a lot better. Like currently the Shermans that are available in the guards armoured are so overpriced in comparison to the third armoured <laughs> and there was no reason for it. So yeah, 140 to 130 is definitely going to mean that the Sherman Vibes are actually used a lot more and the Command Sherman as well. They've increased the Firefly availability in Phase B from 1 to 2 per pack and in C from 2 to 4 per pack. So Fireflies might actually become a thing. Currently, you have to be very careful with them, especially when you're going up against things like Panthers. You are pretty well off if you trade one for one, but most of the time that doesn't happen. Fireflies get destroyed by Panthers, and they are pretty much the only thing you have to go up against them other than like 17 pounders so yeah having more of them available will allow you to basically be a bit more reckless with your fireflies like two fireflies is 400 points one befell panther is like a 280 um you can you can use that point advantage that you have to like double team a panther finally and uh, not be too worried about losing one and they've moved the Veteran Firefly to a single card in Phase B. Okay. So that is the Allies. Let's move on to the Germans. So, starting off with the Germans in general, they are reducing the BMW R75 price from 35 to 30. That is the motorcycle that not many people use, although is becoming used more. Recently, I've seen quite a few people actually bring them out, weirdly. Um, but with a price reduction, maybe they'll be used a little bit more. What I find the BMW R75 is really good for is getting rid of enemy recon infantry and also just running down infantry in the open. So the great thing about the BMW R75, it's very fast. And it can like run down units and make them surrender because it's a vehicle. So if you like pin down an infantry squad in a field, like away from like a road, you can use the the, the motorbike to go run them down very, very quickly, which is a really nice use for them. You just got to make sure that you're not A, being hit by an AT gun or B, anything else <laughs> because you're going to you're going to lose it. But if you're just out of range to be able to use your machine gun at max range on the infantry pin them down and then go and just make them surrender quick they're definitely worth it and they even more are now with the uh, put, uh, price reduction maybe people will start bringing them they've reduced the IG-18 accuracy from 4 to 3 they nerfed my baby which is unfortunate but I think it's fair I'm not entirely sure why they reduce the accuracy over anything else the accuracy i think it's maybe just to stop them killing vehicles so much but the main benefit of the ig in my opinion is their ab uh, ability to stun units and using them to fire position on particular units like reducing that accuracy i don't think is going to make too much of a difference 
in their dedicated use, which is to stun enemy units. So I'm not too concerned about that change. And I think in general it needed to happen because IG-18s are staple in pretty much every division that has them available at the moment. They've reduced the JU-87D price from 110 to 100. This is the JU-87 with the four 50 kilogram bombs, which basically did absolutely nothing other than maybe stun some units. But even then, it didn't do that properly. Um, so I'm not sure if that's going to encourage them to be used much more. Honestly, I don't think it is. But either way, the option is there now. They've reduced the Flammenwerfer price from 25 to 20. And the Fulsion Flammenwerfer price from 25 to 20 as well. So flamethrower buffs in general to smaller flamethrower squads. Which I think is fair. Like those are decent price buffs. If that was like 25 to 15, I'd probably cry a little inside because it would encourage the meta I was talking about even more. And I just don't want to see that happen. Like, it's just unnecessary micromanagement, which really frustrates me in, in games. Currently, I feel like the game doesn't have too much of that and allows people to get on top of their micromanagement quite easily without having to rely on this like whole weird double teaming of infantry squads all the time. It's like, may as well give the flamethrower to a blue in stormtrooper squad and make them 10 points more right that's kind of where it's getting to and that's really frustrating to play with either way uh, moving on to the 91st Luftlander they've moved the BMW to phase A and availability change to a single pack of four again that's to encourage people to actually bring the motorcycle they've increased the Grenadier with Faust to five Picard and they've increased the Grenadier Führer availability from three to four Reduce the Pioneer availability from 6 to 5. So these are just infantry changes made to balance out the infantry a little bit more in the early phases. And I think it's just to allow Grenadiers to actually be a thing. Because currently people just use like Erzats alongside Falschemjägers. And the Grenadiers don't really get used. So having like a little bit more availability actually makes them a viable choice. Um, this Grenadier Führer, I think it's just because there's not actually that much like command units on the div on the division, so you had to be very sparing with your infantry uh, command specifically. And again, that's 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 why that changes there. They reduce the pioneer availability. That's in phase B and C, so. That's just to help out with that, just sort of to counteract the infantry availability. They removed the Lorraine from the Lufthansa. I think that was more for historical reasons than anything else. I never really used the Lorraines much, so it doesn't really affect me. They removed one pack of the Bio Schwim and the Bio Kubel from the 91st Lufthansa, which is just an overall nerf to the use of off-map RT for the division. And they also removed one pack of the HS123 from Phase B. So, yeah, I think this is just to stop 10v10 spam more than anything. Because I'm not sure people brought in that much off-map as the 91st Luftlander. And if they did, bringing it all in would cost you an absolute bomb. So you'd probably get overrun in other ways. By the way, they increased the FK39 rate of fire. And, um, yeah, that's great. Um, just in general, makes that artillery piece a little bit more useful than it used to be. So in general, um, they nerfed the artillery capabilities of the Luftlande quite significantly and their HS129 or 123 available, you know, is going to make a difference, I think. But in general, the 91st Luftlande will remain one of the uh, stronger divisions on the Axis side of things, in my opinion. 17th SS, they've increased the Marder 3 availability in Phase B to four rookies or two veterans. 
Okay, so that might actually make Armada 3 worth taking if you can get them at veterancy, at uh, two, two veterans, basically. And they've removed the Marta 3 from Phase C. So it looks like they've made the Marta 3 more of like an exclusive Phase B thing. And they removed the SK-18s from the deck. Now I kind of like this change. It's a bit... I think again it was historical, but in general it means that there's a lot more focus you can put onto the kind of artillery strategy you want to use as a 17th SS. Because currently... Well, there was like multiple strategies you could use. There was like the Nebelwerfer strategy, which is the most common. Um, then in like a 10v10, you could like spam the SK-18s and do an absolute ton of damage from range. And then there was like another one where you could like rely on the self-propelled artillery. But yeah, removing the SK-18s, I think that's fair enough. People were just going to have to rely on one or the other now instead of having all the least, all of these choices, which kind of just left you using up more uh, packs than you had to on, on the artillery tab. So, yeah, I like that change. 12th SS will stay relatively powerful, which is, which is nice. 352nd Infantry. They've removed one pack of veteran Jagdpanther from Phase C to avoid the spam in 10b10. So... That's the two pack of Jagdpanthers. Again, doesn't really affect how I play. It was specifically done for 10v10. They've reduced the SBW 204 CDM price to 75, and this is a welcome change. I actually recently took out the SBW from my deck and replaced it with infantry in the recon tab just because they cost too much and weren't worth it. So reducing the price might make me add it back in again. They've added one Elite Pack 38 in Phase A and an Elite Pack 40 in Phase B. I'm not sure if they're going to creep their way into my division, maybe the Elite Pack 40. But currently I don't feel like the 352nd Infantry suffered too much for AT. They have plenty they can bring in. Yes, it's not very veteran at the moment, but I've never really felt like the availability has ever been an issue where I could just have like three AT guns and like one command unit nearby and just use them. I don't know. Like this will make me struggle for availability and replace that with veterancy instead not quite sure where the balance lays with that but it's an interesting change they've changed the uh, martyr two packs from three rookies to two veterans again they're just trying to make the martyrs worth taking because currently their armor is so low that it just is a is a massive problem so actually making them be able to hit something is quite nice and they've added two packs of martyr threes in phase b okay so again just trying to make martyrs relevant Third Volshimager, they've uh, changed the weapon of the Sharpshooter to a G43 with a scope, which has the same stats as the Lee Enfield, instead of the uh, weird sort of AT rifle thing that they used to use. I think that's just because of the time period in the game. I'm not sure if the gun that the old Sharpshooter used to use was still relevant in the German army. And they've uh, reduced the HS129 of one pack in phase B and C to avoid spam in 10B10. Fair enough. That's just another 10B10 change there. Overall, 3rd Force Omega probably going to remain one of the strongest divisions actually in the game. I think currently they are probably as equal strong as the 91st Luftlander. The 352nd Infantry is pretty strong at the moment as well. And I think honestly having these elite AT guns especially in phase B, this pack 40 might be a bit overkill, but we'll see. Moving on to the 12th SS. They've reduced the Pioneer to five per pack in phase B. They've increased the MG42 to four per pack in phase B. And they've reduced the Panzer IV J price from 130 to 125. So, Reducing the Pioneer to 5 per pack in Phase B 
I'm not so sure about that. I mean, six was fine, in my opinion. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. Increasing the MG42 to four per pack might be quite nice to allow the 12th SS to control infantry based areas a little bit better. So their long range infantry capabilities will increase and their short range will decrease. As for the Panzer IV J, not sure I ever really used them. So that really won't affect me too much. The 12th SS will stay relatively the same. 716th changes, here we go. This is uh, what will make me laugh or cry. And in this case, I think it's going to make me laugh because a lot of people call the 716th underpowered on the on the forums at least. And in 1v1, maybe they are. But in 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, I think they're probably one of the stronger Axis divisions. And what they've done is they've added a pack of one Befeld Panzer 35 in Phase A. So you've got a command tank to assist your B2s. And what they've also done is reduce the B2 price from 110 to 100, which is crazy in my opinion. I don't think the B2 needed the price buff at all. I think they are fantastic already if used in the right places. Maybe the reason for this is just so that they... Uh, say if you get countered by an AT gun with 11 AP in phase A or by something like a Stuart or a Locus like manages to like one bang your B2 it doesn't sting so much but in my opinion that price buff for the B2 I'm just gonna I'm just gonna love that so much they've also reduced the Flemming Panzer B2 price from 110 to 85 and this is very welcome because the B2 the Flemming Panzer B2 had nowhere near the capability of the normal Panzer B2 because it doesn't have the 1000 meter to 9 HE howitzer that the normal one does. So this just relies on its flamethrower and getting up close and personal. So reducing it to 85 is, I think, very welcome. And I think I might actually add that back into my division. Right, 21st Panzer. They've increased the FLAC 38 availability from 2 to 3 for pa uh, per pack, and they've increased the U304 FLAC availability from 2 to 3 per pack as well. They've also increased the FLAC Panzer Gepard availability from 3 to 4 per pack, and veterancy increased by one step. And uh, yeah, that's basically a bunch of AA changes to allow more availability in the 21st Panzer, because that's something they really struggled with on their anti-air tab and you used to have to be forced to bring more cards than necessary in your anti-air just to like overcompensate for anti-air in general which was really annoying so they've kind of like counteracted that now with the availability buffs to the anti-air which I think is perfectly fair. They've reduced the UE 630 pack price from 35 to 30 points so that's the uh, half track with the 5 AP power pack on it, I think. And the U304 pack was in reduced from 45 to 35. I think they had 9 AP, as far as I remember. But that's pretty cheap now. So maybe we'll see more of those actually used. Panzer IV C price reduced from 80 to 70. This is the Panzer IV, I think, with the 9 HE cannon. So we might see more of those come out. I'll have to play around with the 21st Panzer. I haven't played them too much recently. And finally, we have the Panzerlea. They have reduced the SDKFZ 25010 price from 40 to 35. And they've reduced the Puma price from 110 to 100. I've never really been a fan of the Pumas. But reducing their price slightly kind of makes sense to me. Just to allow a little bit of leeway for the Panzer Lair in Phase A. And uh, just uh, give them a little bit extra points they can use to spend on their super expensive other units. Same with this little price buff to the half track. So yeah. Nice little changes to the Panzer Lair. I honestly think if you're, if you're going to change the Panzer Lair in general though. They're going to need a little bit more change than that moving on. We'll have to wait and see what people suggest and what people come up with in the future. But the Panzerlehr, I feel, 
are probably the German division that needs the most adjustment in the game currently. As for the rest, well, yeah, the 91st Luftlander, 3rd Volschemeger and 352nd, still by far the strongest. Quickly followed by the 17th SS and 12th SS. Then I guess you've got the 716th and then the 21st Panzer after that. And then the Panzer is probably the worst. I still feel like the 716th can put up a fight against a lot of the Allied divisions very effectively. But that is about it. Just a few more changes down the bottom there. And uh, just uh, an announcement at the bottom saying that something else is coming in the works. So there's that to look forward to. But that is my look at the Division Bell update. And I hope that you guys appreciate my comments on the patch. Like I said before, I will be going through each division separately once again, bringing an update video to all of my battle group overviews. In the meantime, hopefully you found this video helpful, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.